Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. We'd like to welcome everyone this morning on the South Side, those who are in person, as well to those who are online. Um, I hope you guys had a great week. If not, we're glad you made it here this morning. Um, at this time, we're going to open up with prayer to start our worship service this morning. Let us pray. Dear Lord, once again, we just thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord. We thank you for giving us the breath of life, having us here clothed in our right minds, and giving us the opportunity to come here and give honor and glory to your name, Lord. We ask that as we fellowship with one another and worship you, Lord, that our praise will be acceptable in your sight. We just thank you for all things that you have done for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please stand with us. We're going to sing Silent Nights. 142. Oh, wait. No, 143. If you have it.
us. Thank you. Okay. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Your announcements are as follows. I will first cover the shoe drive. And so I want to remind you. We're collecting new and gently used tennis shoes. So if you have some that you want to offload to help us in our fun drive to get to Gillette, Wisconsin, or Gillette, excuse me, to get to Gillette for the um, Pathfinder Camporee next year. Um, so please bring those. You'll see a um, plastic tub that's out, out front in which you can come and bring to donate those uh, gym shoes. So it's no dress shoes, just gym shoes. And then I want to remind you that next Sabbath is our Pathfinder Day. Can somebody say amen? amen? Okay, we're going to support our Pathfinders in Pathfinder Day, so please come next Sabbath. The, path, the pastor will be our, um, our speaker of the hour, and we want to make sure that we support our Pathfinders. And then the following day on that Sunday morning at 9 a.m. will be our um, our uh, board meeting so it is moved up to 9 a.m. so mark that on your calendar there's a lot of activities that are taking place um, Sunday afternoon which is the the um, the Red Cross we're gonna have support from sister Andrea if you want to get your CPR certification so we have moved our board meeting to 9 a.m. so that we can support uh, sister Andrea our health ministries in uh, at 11 o'clock for that per for that specifically and then um, I'm not sure how many are going to Pelk. I want to remind you that you can log in. There's still time to go ahead and uh, register for the Pastoral Evangelism Leadership Council. That is going to take place to, uh, on Sunday. It starts Pelk. So um, if you haven't got your tickets, you can still get on Spirit. You can get on Walmart. You can get on Delta, whoever you fly, American. Um, you can still come and join us, fly to Atlanta, drive over to Huntsville. We will be in Huntsville for the next few days. I know our pastor is already there and lots of leaders. You don't want to miss that. The theme has changed, and I'm looking forward to that. And then lastly is the Black Tie Gala, the, um, our holiday party that's going to take place on December the 16th at 6.30 at the Marriott Southfield. So I wanna encourage you, I'm quite sure that Pontiac will have a table. If you wanna go, you can contact me. You can see the flyer that's there in front of you to give you all the information that you need to know about participating with Pelk. Those are your announcements. Have a happy Sabbath. Amen, amen. At this time, uh, I know last week was Thanksgiving, right? Now, some of you guys didn't get a chance to uh, maybe share a testimony of thankfulness, of God's grace and mercy. So at this time, we are going to share our testimonies, if there are any. I do have one. And that's Sister Pam, Sister Rowe. Okay, great, great. So I'm going to start off with mine because mine is going to be kind of short. I kind of talked about it um, Wednesday at prayer meeting. So you know the saying is, don't do that, you'll put your eye out. Yeah, well, I almost put my eye out. Uh, <laughs> so I'm an auto hauler, and I was um, chaining down my trucks to transport. And um, you, have to, you have to have a, have a four-pound, five-pound pry bar, which you stick into the hole to, for the spindle to tighten down the chains. I've done this in my sleep, but this particular day, um, I was chaining down the trucks, and as I chained to tighten down the chain, and I was pulling the bar out, for some strange reason, it slipped through my hand and struck me directly dead center in my eyeball. 
Uh, but I'm so thankful because God has made our bodies to be so amazing. You know, they say in the blink of an eye, well, my eyelid closed as the bar came towards my eyeball. Um, it hurt. It hurt. I had a few choice words, and, and I couldn't see for like about five minutes or so. And, you know, I stumbled around. But as I, you know, opened my eye and tried to see a little bit, it was a little blurry at first, but after a while, my vision cleared up. Um, this is why I'm wearing my glasses today. Um, I didn't have to wear any makeup this morning because I didn't have a black eye. But I just thank God for protecting me and, and restoring my sight. Um, um, I was able to read my notes during prayer meeting. And um, I just thank God for the grace and mercy and our amazing bodies. Um, Kai. My dad got a new car. Amen. This is going to be a car guy right here. <laughs> He's happy for his dad. Um, mine is quick. I'm just going to sit. Um, I just want to thank God for blessings and answered prayers um, for my daughter. I don't know if some of you knew, but she hit her tooth out again last week at church. So, uh, yeah, don't ask. It ha <sighs> it's... How? I don't know. She hit her mouth on something. Anyway, she knocked her tooth out again, but this time, um, when we went to her dentist to just get it fixed, which is why I wasn't freaking out again, um, I thought it was just going to be easy. Um, but no, this time she cracked the tooth up under her gum. So they were like, her tooth is, is going to like die if we don't give her a root canal. Um, so yeah, see, grown-ups are like, ooh. So um, I was very worried because root canals are not comfortable things, um, and she's nine, so that's even worse. But I want to um, thank God for blessings because um, the dentist was going to send us all the way out to Ann Arbor, and she said this, this is the best like person for, for Danny. It's going to be great for her, and we couldn't get in. Um, and so she goes, well, I'll send you to this other person who's like close by. And she's like, he's, she was like, you know, he's great, but he's not for kids. Like, you know, he does adult teeth. And so I was, I was praying because I'm like, I, you all know, sometimes when you go to the dentist, it's not a great experience. So I'm like, I don't want an adult treating her like an adult. Um, so there was just a lot of prayer. Um, I asked my friends to pray. Um, and when we got there, the dentist was one of the nicest dentists I have ever met in my life. He noticed that she was a child and they changed up everything for her. Um, and they, the way they were talking to her and everything was just so kind and they were an amazing, like amazing dentist team to the point where I was like, well, if I have something wrong with my mouth, I'm gonna come to you guys. Cause like, you guys are great. Um, but I just wanna thank God for them being able to fix her tooth. Um, and it's still in the process of getting like repaired and stuff. So just keep her in prayer. But overall, she was really good. Amen, amen. We're gonna have to get Danny a mouth guard or something. Um, Sister Pam. I want to thank God for his blessings to be here today. Um, last Sabbath, I was so sick. There were a lot of us that were just <laughs> behind Thanksgiving dinner um, with our family that a lot of us were sick. Um, and the Lord is just good. Um, I was really desperate when I text Jan and Mike about coming and taking me to urgent care. I, that was my last resort. I couldn't take any more. Um, but I, I thank God for his healing strength. I want to thank him today for my sister, my brother, my great niece, and for Don Gothard, all four of them, celebrating birthdays together and um, today and just getting messages from, from the family here this morning to celebrate them for my niece, great niece Tammy. Uh, that was her mother that we buried yesterday. So this is really difficult today for her and for her family, but I just thank God he has been so faithful and so strong, so I just want to give him the praise today. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. We just thank God for his healing yeah. of you, Sister yeah. Lindsay. Oh, who was oh. uh, Hello, everyone. My name is Cicero Bullock. Uh, we know who you are. <laughs> I'm a member of this church, or have been for a long time. I grew up in this church, and I just like to Thank the Lord for foundation and being blessed to have the foundations of coming from here. Amen. And I remember as a child, 
we all used to circle around this whole church and hold hands and sing. And I just remember all of the people and all of the faces. And I was blessed and fortunate to be here. And I know that now. I didn't know it then, but I know it now. And that's what I'm thankful for. That's my testimony. And that was a blessing for me because it saved me. I need to be here. Amen, amen. It's a blessing to see you here, brother. It's good to see you. <laughs> Happy Sabbath. I'm just grateful that the Lord let my family come together. I wasn't able to be with them in Virginia, but my, my niece's daughter and son was there, and my daughter and all of them met together, and it was a great reunion. They send me pictures. I'm like, okay, next Thanksgiving I'll be with you guys. But <laughs> it was really great to, let, to know that the Lord is still blessing and, you know, the unity that we have to have, even though we're far apart, we still want to feel yeah. the closeness. So I'm thankful for all the blessings he's bestowed on my family. And I'm glad that, um, you know, the holiday season is going to be, you know, more joyful when you got people that you can communicate with and let them know that you love them and you can share it no matter how far we are from each other. Amen. All right. Um, I just want to thank God for uh, my kids, uh, particularly um, with with Aiden. We had a, a, I guess, challenging year last year when it came to uh, academics. He did fine, but um, it, it took a lot of uh, work and parenting and fights to to get him to do well. But this year, he has a great teacher. Um, she's very supportive, uh, open communication. Uh, whenever we contact her, we usually hear back from her within a few hours, and uh, uh, she's always helpful and supportive. So with his science, um, we noticed some of his grades dipping a bit, so I uh, spoke to her about it. And she was like, if you want, we can give you his paperwork a few days earlier so he can have extra practice. And uh, she did that with, with his language, too, and his grades have been going up. Amen. And uh, when it comes to spelling, he's been getting, I think the last month, 100% on Amen. every single spelling test. So Amen. just really thankful for what God is doing in their lives. Amen. Wow. Amen. Amen. Thank God for proactive teachers. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Um, uh, this, this week I had an interesting experience. So I have a group of, of black students that I support, I'll say in, in air quotes. They just know I'm, I'm kind of there and whatever they need, they can come see me. And so this one particular student, we spend a lot of time talking and I can see if she's having a rough day when she's in the clinic. Uh, they have paper that they kind of cover their area with and I'll go and I'll just write a, she's a, a, a pastor's kid. And so I'll go and I'll just write a scripture for her just to kind of keep her grounded and, and remind her who she is. And so she sent me a text Thanksgiving and, she, and at the end of our conversation, she said, hey, will you get on our prayer call Sunday night? And I was like, yeah, sure. I don't know that, she had no idea what I was gonna say. But I was like, yeah, sure, absolutely. And so I get on the prayer call and it is her and some other black female students and her father is on the call. It was, it was like prayer meeting, if, if I'm honest, right? Are there any testimonies? Do, is, are, you, are, you, you know, are there any prayer requests? And so a couple of students had questions and I'm just sitting there listening because you know, it's, 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 this isn't my call, I'm just here supporting. And he answered their questions, but I felt like there was so much room for, for more. And so the two particular students, one student's, student asked about, you know, sh she, she'll hear God's voice, but she second guesses it and she's not sure what to do with that. And another student said something about just needing encouragement. And so I just sent them both a text, j just like a scripture, and they both responded just so grateful that I had sent them something. And so, you know, there have been times I was like, man, I wish I had a scripture for that. And in that moment, I did have the exactly, well, I didn't have it. Obviously, the Holy Spirit gave it to me exactly the scripture they needed. And so I'm just grateful for that. Amen. 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 One more. Good morning, church. Good morning. Sometimes I forget to be thankful because <laughs> I was sitting here. But anyway, I, uh, I hate to put 
my children always want to know everything about me, but I didn't know about his eye. But I was feeling something around that time about him. I kept I praying for him. Feels, huh? I pray for him all the time because he's on a road driving these big trucks and things, so you know it's dangerous. But anyway, um, I had hurt my knee that I had surgery on about three weeks ago, so I decided, my doctors always call me Dr. Simmons because I go in and I tell them what's wrong with me and, and ask for their approval. So <laughs> I decided after I hurt my knee that the best thing to do was keep going to exercise and just stretching and stretching. and that was the worst thing to do because then it went into my thigh and oh man, it was miserable. But anyway, I went to the doctor Thursday and uh, he released me and <coughs> he said I was doing fine and I could go back to my exercise class. Hear that? The doctor said. So anyway, um, so I, you know, and, and I thought about testimonies and how you have to witness. So there was a doctor in there, two interns and the receptionist. And I said, you know, I said, life is something. I said, you're born, you get old, and you die. And I said, if except for the promise of salvation from Jesus, I said, that's all you have. And so then the doctor spoke up and said, um, yes, my wife is, his wife died about the time John did. So he said, yeah, my wife is up talking to Jesus now and rejoicing with Jesus. And I'm thinking like, okay, how am I going to respond to this? I said, you know, <laughs> I said, you know, my, my husband is resting in his grave out at Great Lakes Military Cemetery. He said, oh, that's where my wife is too. And so I was waiting for some response, you know, because he had already said she was up there. And so he never came back. So anyway, when they were leaving, I said to the two interns, one was a young white lady and one was the, uh, an African guy, and I said, I'm going to pray for you too. I said, young lady, you're entering into a man's field. And I said, young man, I said, you are a black man and you're going to have a lot of problems. I said, so I'm going to be praying for both of you. So I just want to thank God for the opportunity to witness when I can and to not let opportunities go by because the Holy Spirit will give you something to say. And uh, thank you for praying for my son's eye. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first I heard of this, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's better. Okay. It's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Okay. Oh yeah, that doesn't look too bad. <laughs> <laughs> let me see your eye. One eye is bigger than the other. Yeah, I got one, Eric. So my, my testimony is just about, um, one about just community in, in general, right? Um, you know, I, 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 and specifically Eric, right? You know, I've been watching him on this Facebook and doing all of this health <laughs> stuff, right? And, you know, every time I look at the postings, I'm like, man, sh this guy, <laughs> right? <laughs> but, but for me, you know, um, you know as, as I try to balance w of work and, and health, you know, I've always told myself I need to get back into daily exercise. And um, I went from a job prior where I was able to work out and and, and, and work at the same time and, and achieve some, some of my health goals. And um, going back to this job, um, more stress, more, more things to do. And then I, I, I didn't find time to, to, to um, put my health uh, uh, first. And you know, Andrea keeps bugging me and need to work out, need to work out. Um, then I see Eric, right, and all these challenges. And yesterday I'm driving to work, and I think I saw him do 100-something in 31 days. And some told me, you know, I need to, I need to jump on the bandwagon. Not, not, not keeping up with them, but, <laughs> but I need to be in the background trying to, trying to do something, right? And I told myself, um, I'm going to do it. And, but the day went by, right? He had a long day, came back from Lansing. And then it's, you know, 
9, 10 o'clock, and it popped in my head again. I said, man, I said I was going to do 100 push-ups, right? <laughs> and then Andrea said, you know what, let's go, let's do it, right? And, um, you know, after 20, I said, you know what, no, no, <laughs> I can't, I can't. But I kept going, you know, I, I made it to 100, but, I, 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 I just, you know, so ultimately my Thanksgiving is community, right? You know, we, we might not realize, you know, the things, you know, how we impact each other in, in, in our lives. And so I want to thank Eric for his continued motivation as far as keeping himself healthy and, and us as a church. And maybe one day I can join him, <laughs> but, but not yet. Amen, amen. Amen. Well, I thank God for you, and, and uh, I'm, I'm glad I'm thankful that I was able to be an inspiration. We'll, we'll be doing some more push-ups this evening after Sabbath. <laughs> oh, oh, Danny, go ahead, Danny. My testimony is that when I went to the dentist on Friday, that when I got my root canal, they wanted to make sure that it would not hurt since I was, since I'm like a kid. And when I got it like fixed, they gave me a bunch of treats because I was really good, and I'm thankful for that they were really nice. Amen. We just thank God that you were able to preserve that smile in spite of. I thank God. For, I thank God for like a second set of teeth, don't you? You know, the young teeth leave and the, the adult teeth come in, just for those kind of purposes. Uh, but um, I just thank God for everyone, for my church family. We pray that you were blessed by the testimonies. And don't be afraid to share your testimonies. You know, in the, the phrase is they, you know, God will turn your test into a testimony. Share your testimonies because you, you are inspi inspiring someone else who may be in a similar situation as you. And all they need is the, just a word, just a word, just one word um, at this time. If you can scan, um, if you see on the screen, there's our QR code for prayer requests. Um, if you take your smartphone and uh, click on that, and then it'll prompt you where you can send a prayer request to the pastor. Um, if you have a special prayer request for family, for yourself, uh, for your job, whatever it may be, that goes to the pastor, and the pastor will present that before the Lord, yeah, and that's between you, the pastor, and the Lord, um, and then he will work it out for you. Um, we also, are we still doing the cards? Yeah, and if, uh, now if you want to do something a little more primitive and write on uh, uh, a, a card, we, have, we do have prayer cards where you can write your request out. And that request will be prayed for also as well, and God will work it out for you. So if you have, if you have a prayer request that you would like to write down, um, raise your hand, and our ushers will bring one to you. But in spite of all the cars and the QR codes, you don't need a middleman to talk to God. All you have is a direct line between you and the Father. So if you want to cut out the middleman, you can pray and ask God yourself, and he will answer your prayer. Um, at this time, if you can, if you can kneel, um, our elder sister, Elder Yancey, is going to bring our prayer this morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come praising you today and thanking you for all of your blessings toward us, Lord. Thank you for these wonderful testimonies we, we just heard this morning of how you've worked in so many ways, Lord. Lord, thank you for getting Danny to the right dentist. 
Lord, thank you for protecting Eric's eyes. Lord, we thank you for our families that we've been able to come together and fellowship, Lord, over the holidays. Thank you for those that you've brought here today, Lord. Lord, I just want to thank you for CB and for that testimony of his, Lord, and sharing and bringing him back home. Lord, thank you for the traveling mercies that we're trusting that you will provide. We know what you've done this week, but for those that will be traveling to Huntsville and other places this week, Lord, we're praying and asking for mercies over the highways or even the airways for those that are flying, Lord. We, we thank you for your protection, Lord, in so many different ways and asking, Lord, that you be with each one of us and our loved ones, Lord, those that are out of the ark of safety in particular, Lord, touch their hearts, give them that, that question in their minds that what they should do to be closer to you. And even for us, Lord, help that we will be drawn closer to you. Please forgive us for our sins, transgressions, Lord, our weaknesses, and our neglect in the past. Lord, we ask that you be with our speaker, Lord, this morning. Lord, touch Elder Frank from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet and just anoint him so that the message he brings is your message to us, Lord. And help us to apply it in our lives as we bring our listening ears and anoint that we will hear just what you have in store for each one of us and it may be different for each one because just as we differ in faces Lord we differ in needs and desires and concerns Lord bless those that are sick and suffering be very near those that are missing today Sister Kathy Lord Sister Bernice Sister Bobby, Lord, others that are dealing with challenges. And then, Lord, keep your arms of comfort around the bereaved in a special way. Be with, with the Lindsay and the Moulton family, Lord. Be with the Evans. Be with um, my niece, Neosha. Lord, continue to be with the McCullough and the Martin family and Rita Parrish's family who have lost her Lord. Be, be just very near and we know only you can provide and be there for them. Lord, keep us focused on you. Help us to grow closer to you and we just thank you for this church and thank you for the ministries that have already been started and then the plans for the future with the tutoring Bless the young people who will be coming out, Lord, for tutoring. And those that were here this week, just, just bless in a special way so that provisions are made to help our young people in every way possible. Thank you, Lord, for the leadership. And thank you for those that are in charge of our pathfinders and, and bringing, bringing the young people to just show them where they can go and what they can do with their lives. We give you praise, honor, and glory as we prepare, Lord, to go through the rest of this day. Let nothing displease you, Lord. Let us stay connected and then keep us so that we will be then a vessel to be a blessing to someone else. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It's wonderful to see your faces. We hope that you are ready to sing um, and praise the Lord with us. Our first song is going to be Go Tell It on the Mountain because it is in the Christmas era, Christmas time. 
Um, and so we are going to celebrate um, the fact that Jesus was born in a manger and given to us. So have fun with us and sing with us.
Amen. Amen. Uh, please tell me you have the next song, Joy to the World. Yes? Everyone, joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. The joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, 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 oh he is my home. The joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is
sec. Hang on one sec. Okay. One sec. I just have to say something. Oh, Lord. Because we're up here and we're singing about the joy of the Lord. And I wish you guys could see your faces. <laughs> that's, that's not the joy of the Lord. That's not the joy of the Lord. You know, we sing this song. We, I got J-O-Y, J-O-Y, joy, joy. joy. And I'm looking out there, and I just, I can't believe that us as a collective have that. So I just want us Amen. to sing that okay. put one more time. Right. And I'm just hoping Amen. you guys can just just show some joy. <laughs> show some joy. If you if you can't, just fake it so you can make it. Amen. Just for me. Put a smile on your face. Like when you have joy, Amen. like it Amen. shows. Yeah. It shows. Amen. Like I know it's a feeling inside mm -hmm. deep down, but I just want you to let that bubble up just mm. a little bit and show on your face. Amen. If that's okay this Amen. morning. It's Amen. okay. All right, let's All go. Right. <laughs> the joy, the joy of the Lord. The joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy, the joy. All right, we want to hear you guys. The joy of the Lord is my joy. strength. The joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, 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 oh he is my hope. Is he your hope today? Oh, 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 oh he is my hope. We want to hear you guys say, oh. oh. There we go. He is my hope. There we go. Everybody. All right, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> All right, happy Sabbath. 
Okay, so I like telling stories. And um, I found this story, and it's from Nigeria, all right? Yeah, so it's from Nigeria. And in Nigeria, there's this character in some of the stories. His name is Papa Legba. Not just Ni Nigeria, some other Western African culture. Papa Legba. And he's a very mischievous person, all right? He's very mischievous. So I want you to keep that in mind as I tell you my story. So once upon a time, there were two friends. They were born on the same day. They were friends. They were not siblings. They were friends, born on the same day, which I think is so cool. Have you ever had a friend born on the exact same day as you? That's pretty cool, right? So they grew up as best friends. They grew up together. They played together. They worked together, right? And you're not going to believe this, but they married sisters from the same family. They married sisters. I walked into it. No. So these are the friends, and they saw these two girls over there who were sisters, and they ended up marrying them. Does that make more sense? Oh, okay. The friends are boys. I thought that went without saying, but okay. We got to clarify. All right. So these boys grew up together. Is that better? They played together. They worked together. They married sisters from the same family. And they even built their houses across the street from each other. Right? Really, really good friends. So one day, along came Papa Legba walking. Papa Legba, he came walking, and he stopped right in between the friends' houses. And the friends were working in their yards, and to get their attention, Papa Legba said, <coughs> <coughs> and one friend looked up and said, oh, and the other friend looked up and said, oh. Papa Legba just kept right on walking, because that's what he liked to do. One thing I forgot to tell you is they, these friends, they ate together every night at one house or the other house. So this night, they were eating together. And the one, friend number one, friend number one. And they were eating, and the friend said, ah, oh, friend, did you see that man in that beautiful fila, a fila is a hat, a small hat. And he said, yes, yes, I did see him. And it was a beautiful fila. In fact, it was my favorite color, red. And he said, ah, oh, but my friend, the hat was not red. The hat was black. And the other friend said, no, 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 my friend, you must be mistaken. The hat was red, like I told you, it was my favorite color. He said, no, I saw it with my own eyes. The hat was black. He said, no, are you calling me a liar? The hat was red. He said, well, if the shoe fits. He said, red, and they started arguing about what color the hat was. Red, black, red, black. They started fighting. They were fighting, and they tumbled through the door out into the street. So now they're on the street, and they're fighting. Red, black, hitting each other. And these were friends, right? And what happened? They both got arrested for disturbing the peace. Yeah, when you grow up, you'll figure out that sometimes wives can't stop 
stuff like that from happening. So they went to court. So they're in the courtroom. The courtroom is packed, and the judge is sitting, and they're there in the courtroom. And in through the back door walks Papa Legba. And he listened, hmm, and listened, hmm, and listened, hmm, and listened. And then he started laughing. <laughs> and everyone in the courtroom was like, why is he laughing? What's so funny? And an old man went up to him and was like, why are you laughing? What is so funny? And he said, well, both men are wrong, but both men are also right. And he was like, what do you mean? Why are you causing so much trouble? Why are you causing so much trouble? And he said, well, I'm not causing the trouble. You are causing the trouble. Because you guys, when you can't see someone else's side, you like to argue and fight. Mm. So you guys are right. I don't know if you guys could hear them. One side of this hat was red, and one side of this hat was black. I know. But you just want to ruin my story at the very beginning like that? Let me get to the end, right? So the next time you're arguing with your sibling or your spouse or your friend, I'm talking to the adults. They know what spouse means. Or your friends, remember there are how many sides to every story? <laughs> That's right. Did you know there are three sides to every story? OK, so there is your side, the other person's side, and the truth, the truth. So there are three sides to every story, all right? Who wants to pray for us? All right, come on up, come on up. All right, everybody bow their heads. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for every, all our um, family and friends and that I have a house to live in and help us to not repay evil for evil and help, one to help someone to stop when the situation is going on. And thank you for um, our wonderful singing ladies that they have a beautiful voice in Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Please don't let me have a good day, and please don't let me don't argue about, like, we don't argue about small things, and we forgive each other. Thank you for everything you've done in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Dear God, thank you for this day. Help us to love you. Help us to remember that you are always there when, when we need you. Help us to not fight. Help us to always pray. Help us to do what you want us to do. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Please help us about my Aunt Tina gets to stay, and he hopes he comes over. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, back to your seats. It's time for offering. Uh, we are going to sing, Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Um, there are many ways that you can give. You all know them already. So give whichever way you would like to. Um, and sing with us and look in your pockets, take your time, and give to God. Here we go. Tragedy, commonplace. All kinds of diseases, people are tripping away. Economy's down, still can't get enough pay. But as for me, all I can say is, thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Uh, 
All right, we're gonna go back to the top. All right. <laughs> From the top. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. <laughs> Tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases people are stripping away. Economy is down, still can't get enough pay. But I We're going to sing a special song um, specifically for our speaker of the day. Um, are you going to do the introduction of speaker? Yes. His love for the Lord and his obedience to the Lord and his love for his work on the earth encourage me not to learn from him as the big brother. Brother Gary was saying that he 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 took his old, old dog Dietrich. Boy, that's not true. This old dog has learned to do tricks with my brother right here. Uh, it, it is consistency. What kind of God can make the morsels of snow fall from a gray sky? What kind of God can weave the tapestry of a rainbow and sketch it into a wet sky? It's no wonder how he can do every little thing he's done for me. If it hadn't been for you, where would I be? What kind of God can give you a vision and create a skyscraper tall? What kind of God can give you a pattern of color and give it a name like fall. It's no wonder how he can do every little thing he's done for me. And if it hadn't been for you, where would I be? I 
I'd be at the bottom when you told me there's a place at the top for me. I'd be on the backside when you showed me there's a place at the front I should be. I'd be on the outside looking in when you prepare me a table for kings. If it hadn't been for you, where would I What kind of God can take my shattered and wounded heart and fill it with unconditional love? What kind of God can take away my guilt and shame and give me grace to rise above? It's no wonder how he can do every little thing he's done for me. And if it hadn't been for you, where would I be? I'd be at the bottom when you told me there's a place at the top for me. I'd be on the backside when you showed me there's a place in the front I should be. I'd be on the outside looking in when you prepare me a table for kings. If it hadn't been for you, where would I be? I'd be at the bottom when you told me there's a place at the top for me. I'd be on the back side when you show me there's a place in the front I should be. I'd be on the outside looking in when you prepare me a table for kings. If it hadn't been for you, where would I be? Sabbath. I'm going to stand down here because our pastor, that's his space up there. I just want to thank God for the opportunity to be here this morning. I just want to let you all know how amazing 
our praise and worship team is. The song they sang, I asked them to sing it Thursday evening. (laughs) Yeah, Thursday evening. Um, And they still made it happen this morning. Um, I I can't say how grateful I am for that. Um, That song means a lot to me because it... uh, I don't know, how many people know that song from Smokey Norfolk, yeah? That song spoke to me a long time ago when I was in college. Um, and anytime I feel unworthy of being where people tell me God has placed me, and I have to phrase it like that because I'm sure many of us are in that position where sometimes you feel a little bit of a imposter syndrome. Like life is too good. Like I'm, I'm not supposed to be here where I am. And if you never felt that, that's okay. But I, for me, I struggle with that very often. Because life has been amazing for me. Does that mean it's been easy? No. I've had a lot of loss and pain and suffering, but... Life has been amazing. Um, I didn't get a chance to give my testimony. My son kind of (laughs) stole my testimony from me. But uh, it's been about 10 years in the making. There's a particular vehicle I've always wanted. Uh, And I test cars for a living. And I tested this car back in 2014 when it first came out. And I, after driving it and testing it for about six months, I was like, I need to have this car one day. But it was just way outside of my imagination. And I, you know, you know, you have a dream, and you put it up, and you're like, here's a dream. And you kind of just leave it. Uh, man, this past Monday, I got the car, right? <laughs> and um, I, again... That imposter syndrome kicks in. You're like, I'm not supposed to have nice things. Like, uh, why should I have nice things when other people have nothing? You will always have those feelings, and you'll always have accusers. All right? Um, But I just, I give God the praise and the glory because you guys are my church family, and I tell you guys almost everything all the time, ever since I came here back in 2011. And you guys have been with us through having our kids and through getting jobs and through death in the families. And I just share these things with you guys, not to show off, but because I love you guys. And I, I think you love me, right? So... I want to share what God is doing for me. But I also want to encourage people who might be allowing the enemy to stifle their blessings and make them feel unworthy to talk about it because you might be hearing people asking for prayer for cancer and you're over here excited because you got a new house or a new car, and you're like, ah, I shouldn't talk about that right now. You know, it's a, a solemn time. People are suffering. I need to be quiet. But I'm here to tell you that your testimony brings light to dark situations. Um, so I encourage you to do that. But small, small sermon and big sermon, right? Don't let your blessings keep you from God. I say that because I struggle with that this week. Imagine getting something you've wanted for 10 years, and then you have to prepare a sermon. Where do you think your mind going to be? I struggle this week, I, I promise you. Um, anytime I try to think or pray or read the Bible, thoughts of the car, thoughts of the car, thoughts of the car, right? This is a real testimony, and I hope it resonates with somebody here. God will bless you with something you've been asking for for a long time, and then you will let it get between you and him. We do that all the time. Uh, This is my little sermon, and a sermon is don't let 
God's blessing separate you from him. He will give you the car. He will give you the house. He will give you the wife. He will give you the kids. He will give you the job. He will give you the good health. He will restore your health. He will take you on vacations. He will do all of that. But don't let it separate you from him. Don't think on those things more than you think on him. While you're at church, don't be on your phone looking for flights for your next vacation. I say it because I've done it, people. I'm not, I'm not any better than anybody. But I say this every time I come upon here to speak, because I'm not telling you anything that you haven't heard before. I'm just a reminder, a footnote. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love that you've shown us in your son Jesus. You sent him to die for our sins, and he did that. But he also set this example that is so awesome for us. Please let your Holy Spirit now speak through me and speak to me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So it it has this uh, this show that I should not have been watching. It's a very violent show. But I gathered something from it and I'm not actually going to say the name of the show. Although I know some people might know the show. Um, but there was a circumstance where these, these guys, they're in the military, right? There's a team of four, and they were off on a mission. And they were, they were briefed beforehand that, hey, you're going into this area, and the comms might go down, and uh, you're in hostile territory all around. And you're going to find this one individual, and you have to take out this one individual. But there are rules of engagement. One, it is an undercover mission. So the other government doesn't know that you're in their country. Therefore, you cannot kill indiscriminately. You can only take out that one target. You cannot engage any other targets, whether friendly or hostile, unless provoked. Now, hostile means that the person has a gun. That's the only reason they're hostile. It can't mean that they're cussing at you or they're throwing stones at you. It means that they have a gun and they're going to kill you, and that's the only way you can defend yourself. That is the rules of engagement that was given to these four SEALs. They were dropped off, and they're hiking through the desert, through rocky mountains. And every time they pass a location, they say the location they pass. And there's all kind of special names they give these locations. And they say it, and they say it, and everybody's like listening on. And there's this plane that's flying way up in the atmosphere that's up providing comms. But the plane is telling them that in six hours... We're gone, and you'll be on your own. And they have to cover a certain amount of distance before the plane goes away so that they know that they're at their location. And they do that successfully, and they get there. Now, while they're there, they see and they find the person that they're supposed to take out. From far away, they see him. He's talking outside. He's terrorizing people, and they're like, that's the guy. We got eyes on the target. Let's wait until nightfall. We'll go take care of business. So they're hiding now until nightfall. They're just laying up in some bushes, right? And they're biding their time. And here comes an unsuspecting group of shepherds walking their sheep along. And they get so close, like they're right there and One of the shepherds actually, like, steps on the guy's foot. They don't even know he's there. He's so well concealed. He steps on his foot and realizes, and in that moment, the guy has to engage him because you're going to sell out what we're doing. So they get up and they grab him, and the people try to run, and they, they catch everybody, and they tie them up. Now they're faced with this situation. They have three options. They can let the guys go because they're not combatants. 
but you let them go, you know they're going to run back to the village and most likely tell the bad guys that you're there and they'll come get you. You could tie them up and leave them, but that's a very hostile environment where you have wolves and coyotes and they could be killed. Or you could do the last thing. You could end their life. And then you don't have to deal with the consequence of anybody finding anything out. And these four men stood around and they start discussing among themselves. And one of them is like, listen, I love all of y'all. I love my family back home and I'm trying to get back home. These people here, they don't care about us. They're here to kill us. They want to kill us. They hate. Look at the way they're looking at us. Because the guys were upset, right? They're tied up. They're watching them. And they, they want to, they, you could feel the hate. And the guy <laughs> said, I love you and I love you. I don't know them. I could put them down and not lose a night of sleep. And then the other guy said the words that stuck out to me. He's like, you know we can't do that. That's against the rules of engagement. And I thought to myself, rules of engagement trump mission. Think about that. The lesson study has been talking about mission, right? And we talk about mission, remember mission, remember your mission. And then I realized that rules of engagement can trump your mission. What does that mean? Well, well what is our mission? What was Jesus' mission? And where is that found? <laughs> Luke chapter 19, verse 9 to 10. I knew you would say it, Sister Yancy. <laughs> Uh, Luke 19, 9 to 10. And that, that actually comes from the story of Zacchaeus. If you don't know where the seek and save the lost verse comes from, it comes from the story of Zacchaeus, right? And it says, And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. Verse 10, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That's a mission. That was Jesus' mission. That was our, that's our mission. And it will be our mission until we go home, right? What are the rules of engagement for us as Christians? Ha! That's that the hard part, huh? Well, I think, and well, it's weird because we don't have like a reading of the scripture reading anymore in our service. So, our scripture reading for today is actually, if you turn with me, Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. And my kids, there's Chloe and Kai. They're somewhere. They, they know it because we practice it. But it's something that I've always lived by. It's a simple verse, Luke chapter 6, verse 27 and 28, but we're going to read all the way through to 31, and it says, But I say to you who hear, Chloe and Kai, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who spitefully use you. I'm, I'm going to pause and help you to understand what this is saying. It is saying that there are people that are going to hate you. But it's saying to those people who hate you, do good to them. It's saying you're going to have enemies. An enemy is somebody, actually, when you look at the description of an enemy, somebody that wants to kill you. It's not they don't like you. They want to kill you. In, in, back in the day, <laughs> when you had an enemy, that was somebody who trying to kill you. It's not, oh, I don't like them. You'll have people that want to kill you. They dislike you that much, they want to kill you. And guess what it's telling you to do? 
Love them. That is so against everything that we are, isn't it? No, really, I want to connect with you all here today on this point. There are people that want to kill you. There are people that hate you. That was the crazy part. The last part is what gets me every time. Pray for those who spitefully use you. There are people that are in your life right now, you know are using you, right? Right? No? You don't know that. Not just using you, but spitefully so. Like they don't like you and they're using you. It's not I like you and you're a good person and I'm using you for what I could get, but you could use me too. No, they're spitefully using you to the point where they actually want to use you up and spit you out. That's the concept of spitefully using you. And it's telling me, mind you, you know why I use this verse? Because there are other verses I could use in the Bible to point out how to treat people. You know why? It's in red letters. You know what red letters mean? It's actually the words of Jesus. Actually, the words of Jesus. He's telling you there are people that are going to try to spitefully use you, and I want you to pray for them. Verse 29, to him who strikes you on the one cheek, offer the others also. See, the thing is, in today's world, we've been convinced that we have to protect ourselves. We are responsible for self-preservation. But everything about Jesus' life indicated that he did not depend on himself to preserve himself. And I want you to read his life carefully from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And go through and see where did Jesus ever have self-preservation at the forefront of his mind. It was never there. He trusted the Holy Spirit and his Father to protect him as far as they saw necessary. And whatever else he had to endure, he was okay with it. Are we okay with that? Because when we when we talk about stuff like this and you say if somebody strike you, turn the other cheek, we're like, well, that's metaphoric, my friend. (laughs) And I dare say it's not metaphoric. Because I saw Jesus, well not saw, but I read about Jesus being brutalized and he never once raised a finger to defend or to fight back or do anything. You know what he trusted God to do? Make him disappear when it was time to disappear. You all read about that in the Bible where people were gathering around him ready to throw him off of a cliff and he just disappeared. It never said he did anything negative to people. You know why? He trusted God to do what God said he would do. When we start stepping in for God is when we mess up. Is when we throw the whole thing out of balance and we mess up our representation of Christ's character. Because we are genuinely trying to be Christian in here. I I believe that with all my heart. Everybody sitting here right now wants to be a good Christian. But we all are messing it up. One form or the next. Why? Because we're trying to do our own thing. All right. But then at the end it says, And from him who takes away your cloak, (laughs) do not withhold your tunic either. I just want you to understand again. When somebody takes your cloak in this this instance, it's not they came and asked you for your coat. It's they beat you up and they steal your stuff. And he's saying to those people, give them a little bit more. You all ready to do that, though? Understand this. These are the words in red, and these are the rules of engagement. See, too many of us are really, really focused, and I thank God for our pastor, because we're really on, on, on mission right now. And we're out And we're doing things in the community, but I need us to really focus and understand that if you are outside of the rules of engagement, it's best you take a step back from the mission. 
I say all that to say this because let me tell you a little bit more about this story. So the guy says that's not the rule of engagement. And then ultimately the commanding officer steps in and he said, this is not up for debate. We are part of the military. We have rules that we have to live by. If we don't live by them, we go and face even harsher situation back home versus getting killed over here. Either way, there's a bad situation. What we're going to do is follow the rules of engagement. So what did they do? They cut the guys loose, and they used every opportunity to try to escape. What happened in the end? Three out of the four of them died. One of them survived. The guy who made the decision, however, he died trying to make a call home for help. Again, they were in a position where their comms weren't working and they were failing, right? Rules of engagement for us as Christians matter. It is not okay to say, well, I am not cheating on my wife, so I could just cuss her out at least. It's not okay to say, well, at least I'm at church, so it's okay if I take a little bit of drugs here and there. Understand that your rules of engagement as a Christian mean that you are representing Christ in everything that you do, which means that when you want to lose your temper, you remember Jesus' sermon on the mount that says when you're angry with your brother, it's the same as killing him. So that's your rules of engagement. I can't just do the bare minimum. I have to do it the way Christ would do it. Why is our mission so important? I could just imagine, you know, <laughs> I could imagine God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and maybe some of the angels sitting around in a room, a war room as they call it, right? And they're trying to figure out, all right, and I, guys, I know this is not what happened because God is all-knowing and this is not what would have happened, okay? All right. But just use your imagination with me. So they're sitting around and they're like, listen, we have a sin problem. We have to save these humans. How are we going to do this? And Jesus is like, I will go and I'll die for their sins. And an angel must be like, but why though? Who are these people? Like, who's this creation that's so important that you have to go and die and suffer humiliation at their hands. Like, why are they so important? Now, I could tell you, I don't know why, and the Bible never says why. We, as human beings, are so important. So that's one of my first questions to God when I meet him. Why did we matter so much to you? But I'll tell you this. The Bible does say, Genesis 1.26, Then God said, Let us make man and woman, in our image, according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. God said that. And because he said it, we suddenly have value. I don't have any other explanation as to why we're so important in the grand realm of things. He said, let's make, us, make them in our image, and he made us in his image. And in that moment, from that moment forward, we became important. So now we're this asset that he has to protect, and he has to recover, and he will do everything in his power to recover us. But there were rules of engagement in that recovery process. It meant that Jesus had to come, and his rule of engagement meant that he cannot sin. He had to endure this life without sin. He wasn't allowed the opportunity to lose his temper, cuss somebody out, and then ask for forgiveness. If he did that, it would have been over. We're not asked to be that perfect. And I thank God for that because I wouldn't have made it. Then you look at Psalm 836. 
Psalm chapter 8, verse 3 to 6, David now. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained, what is man that you take thought of him? And the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than who? Nope. My version says a little lower than God. And you crown him with, go with glory and majesty. And make him to rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. Again, it was his word that gave us value. He said that I'm going to make them like me. And that's where your value comes from. You don't need somebody to tell you or to give you value after that. You are the most valuable thing, apparently, in the universe to God. It's a strange and weird thing for me to say that because I'm like, as David said, who are we that we matter this much to you for you to come and save us while maintaining the rules of engagement. But we give ourselves excuses every day to break the rules of engagement. If you haven't figured out by now, the topic of the sermon is rules of engagement. <laughs> I'll, give you, I'll give you a funny thing. It's called ROE in the military. And it says that the rules that govern, the, it's the rules that govern the use of force to reflect the will of the civil and military leadership. ROE are defined as directive, directives issued by competent military authority that delineate the circumstances and limitations under which United States forces will initiate and or continue combat engagement with other forces encountered. It, de it decides whether they're going to engage or not. So your rules of engagement are important in your mission. And we all agree on a mission to seek and save the lost, but I think many times we lose sight of our rules of engagement. So we're on mission, but we're off target, if that makes sense. Okay. I'm kind of out of time. So I'm just going to say a few more things. And I'm not like the pastor. If I say I'm done, I'm done. All right? But I, I want us to just, it's, it's a simple concept that I presented today. Rules of engagement applied to your marriage, to the way you engage your children, to how you interact with your brothers and sisters, your family, the people in these streets, right? Because many times, this past, past Wednesday, you know, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, uh, Andrea, I think it was, thank God for reconciliation. And, and it stuck with me because I thank God for reconciliation too. And I, I, I pray for reconciliation for everyone. Because, man, you have to understand, and I use the term like we're in a military because we're at war. And many of us walk around trying to keep our head in the sand maybe. We don't, we're non-combatants, so we like, I don't want to think in terms of that. But you're against that enemy that knows you better than anybody knows you. You don't even know you as good as this enemy does. And we give too much credit to other people for our downfalls. What, what we're not acknowledging is there's an there's a actual being that is seeking to kill you and to steal from you and to destroy you. And everything he does is centered on that sole purpose. So when you think that you're having a hard time talking to your mother or your father, know that there is an entity that is 
twisting your words in their ears. There's an entity that's twisting their words in your ears. You're misunderstanding, kind of like Miss Michelle's lesson this morning. Both of them were right, but both of them were wrong. But many of us, we just cannot seem to acknowledge that we could be wrong. So we stay on this path, this war path, and we, we start veering outside of our rules of engagement as of Christianity. When you find yourself cussing at somebody, you're outside of the rules of engagement. When you find yourself wishing negative on somebody, you're outside the rules of engagement. And I'm talking as, as minimal as it might seem, driving and somebody cuts you off, and you're like, man, I wish that car crashes. Yeah. I, I see smiles because I know you all thought it too. Listen, it's okay to be flawed, but it's not okay to give yourself the excuse to be flawed. Does that make sense? It's all right that you're, you struggle with sin, but it's not okay to give yourself an excuse to sin. That's where repentance and forgiveness comes in. You have to ask for forgiveness, else you won't be forgiven. You can't think that God is just going to, well, he knows I'm sorry, so he will forgive me. You have to actively ask for forgiveness. And then actively try to repent. And if, if you're so blessed in this life, you will repent from certain things and you never will go back. But I promise you, it will have some stuff that will, you'll struggle with. Maybe until you die. But that's the key part. You need to keep struggling with that stuff. Lastly, Ecclesiastes 12, 9 to 14. And this is really just to answer the question of what is, what is really important in life? Is it to, is it to uh, get a good job, get the car, get in the house? How about get the, the companionship, the, how, the husband, the wife? Create a long-lasting lineage for yourself. Have many children. What, what is important? For a long time, I thought it was at least getting some of those things done. But I'm looking at faces in here who I know have achieved quite a bit. And I'm sure all of you can agree with me. At the end of life, none of these things are important. It's not. I love you, Eric. Boy loves to exercise. Health is a big deal. But is it the most important thing? See, we're a little bit outside the rules of engagement with what we're teaching our kids is important. I appreciate your testimony, Kudzai. School is important. Good grades are important. But is it the most important? See, what we're not realizing, when you look at all these stories in the Bible, every single one of them comes back to relationships. Relationships are the most important. And that's why when you read what Jesus said, how to engage people, that's why those are the rules of engagement. Love your enemies. Relationships. Do good to those who despise you. Relationships. Pray for those that spitefully use you. Relationships. You will, the enemy will always make you feel, he'll always make you feel like the other person could do better. It's on them. But I, 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 I'll close with this. I heard this, uh, this guy, I can't remember his name. He's uh, Mr. Brown from Tyler Perry stuff, that guy. I can't remember his name. But he said he was talking to some young people at a relationship convention thing. And uh, <laughs> he was like, I want you to write everything down that you're looking for the person, the next person. And they were like, 
they were right. And he's like, he looked at the list and he's like, no, write everything down. You're holding back some stuff. And then they were done. And man, people had a page and a half of a list that they need from the, pers- the other person. <laughs> and he was like, all right, now you go and become those things. <laughs> right? I mean, it's a, it's a funny little anecdotal story, but I want to encourage all of us to treat life like that. When you see somebody who might hurt you or might say something to offend you or they're not doing what they're supposed to do, or we've talked about this a hundred times, they need to improve, right? Like, write all those things down and then become that to God. Because everything that I have a problem with my wife with, I do to God. And he reveals that to me every time. If I think she's being selfish, I'm selfish to God. A hundred percent of the time. It's all about me. Lord, help me. Right? If I think she's not talking to me, I ain't talking to him. I challenge you today, please. When you feel like people are doing you the wrong thing, stick within the rules of engagement and question When they hurt you, am I hurting him? Yes? Okay, let me forget them and let me engage with God. When when I feel spited on purpose, spitefully used, (laughs) again, Jesus is amazing, man. The, The words he uses is so perfect because that's exactly what we feel, right? We feel like people are spiteful in their use against us. Like, you know better. Why are you doing this over and over? What does he say to do again? Pray? Pray for them. Do we spitefully use God? Whatever you think that people are doing to you, I promise you, you're doing it to him. And if you could just get that little perspective in your life this week, Man, it will change your life. It takes away so much stress and anger and anxiety and, and, and rage. You have no idea because if I could just understand that I am the one doing this stuff to God and he's using, he's allowing these people to do this stuff to me so I, he could get my attention. He could get my attention to see this is what you're doing to me. And every time you feel that, you look at him. Every time you feel that, you look at him. That's what he wants. That's where the relationship is built. Because you'll come back and you'll say sorry. And every time you feel that that pain in your side of somebody hurting you, and you focus, oh, am I doing this to God? Yes, I am. Lord, please forgive me. Have mercy on me. You, You suddenly realize you don't have any energy to focus on other people. You won't have the, 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 the emotional bandwidth to find fault in other people because every time you find fault in them, you see a problem in you and you're like, yo, <laughs> I need to just focus on me because I, I am not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So with that being said, um, Thank you, uh, Jay, for your testimony. That was a blessing. I never thought I'd hear Jay give a testimony out here. <laughs> I thank God for uh, for real community. Um, and this this thought of rules of engagement really came about from. I hear a lot now. Uh, more than I want to. Um, and I realize that, you know, sometimes we just, we don't do what we're supposed to within our rules of engagement. Maybe because we don't remember them or we don't know them. But please, moving forward, remember that we're representing Christ. He set the example really clearly for us. I know it's against what the world teaches today, but 
His example doesn't change. And it won't ever go away. So just whenever that stuff builds up in you and you want to do your own thing, remember, yes, you're on, you're on mission, but stay within rules of engagement, all right? That's it. Um, Eric, close this out in prayer, sir. Amen, amen. Thank you, Frank. Um, I love that analogy. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put a, well, one word in front of that. God's rules of, of engagement. Um, and God's rule of engagement is what? Unconditional love. He sent his son to die for us. And surely, and surely at the bare minimum, we can show love for those who don't agree with us those who are resistant to his word and we just need to show love and just and just do what God says. We just thank you for your uh, your word today Lord and um, we're going to close out at this time. Let us pray. Dear Lord once again we just thank you for you following your rules of engagement Lord. You loved us when we were disobedient. You loved us when we spat on you we threw rocks at you when you crucified you, Lord. And yet, you still follow the rules of engagement, Lord, of your unconditional love. We ask that, Lord, as we leave this place today, that we will not leave your presence. We ask that you will continue to be with us, be with the families here, be with those who are online, listening to your word. We ask that as we go throughout the week, Lord, that we will remember that to follow your example. We just thank you for all these things you have done for us. Please bless the food that has been prepared and bring us together again, once again, next week. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Be where